Hello and welcome back to another video by The Rose System. I am Sarah and today we will be talking about flashbacks. This is a tricky topic and we are speaking from our own experience and limited research. We have left some resources in the description below. There are so many things we could cover but this video would be hours long so we will only cover some information. A trigger warning for this video we are looking at an example of a car crash to illustrate some of the information. Let's get into it. So what are flashbacks? Flashbacks are the memories of a traumatic event that feel as though the event is happening again. There are many different types of flashbacks and each comes with its own challenges. Some flashbacks are partial flashbacks, where only one or some of the senses are impacted. For example, emotional flashbacks are when you re-experience just the emotions that you felt during the trauma. Other flashbacks are full flashbacks, where all the senses believe that you are back in the traumatic situation. For example, say someone was in a car crash, a partial flashback may be the sensation of the seatbelt locking across the chest or hearing metal colliding or even just the fear you experienced. A full flashback would be seeing the car crash unfold, feeling the sensations, hearing the collision and smelling the air freshener that you had in the car that day. In a full flashback, you believe that you are in the event again and all your senses indicate that you are. Whereas in a partial flashback, you may be aware of the present day. For us, we experience partial flashbacks a lot more frequently than full flashbacks. We will experience partial flashbacks daily. Our full flashbacks are less regular. Most of our partial flashbacks are physical sensations with the corresponding emotions. We can feel the points of physical contact that the trauma memory holds. Our worst flashbacks include the sound as well. When we experience full flashbacks, we get the images and smells on top of the other senses. But once the flashback is over, I, Sarah, lose the memory of what happened. The amnesia comes back in. Flashbacks sometimes occur randomly, but a lot of them are caused by triggers. Triggers are anything that cause a flashback. An example with our car crash situation is the sound of a horn, the feelings of a car braking suddenly, or the seatbelt locking as the car turns to the corner. Something as simple as a can being crushed can also be a trigger because it reminds the person of the sound of metal colliding. Anything can be a trigger, a smell, a sound, a sensation, anything visual. There are no stupid triggers and no one should be shamed because of their triggers. The brain makes these links to get the body ready to act should the trauma be happening again. Knowing what the triggers are is the first step to helping someone overcome a flashback. Depending on the trigger, you may change how you approach helping your loved one. In the beginning, it is helpful to avoid the triggers, but with professional help, gradual exposure therapy can help reduce the impact the triggers cause. There are a number of ways you can help someone through a flashback. The best way to determine what to do is to talk to your loved one about what is helpful before a flashback happens. What is helpful for one person is not helpful for another. Even in systems, what is helpful changes based upon who is having the flashback. For example, when little A or I experience a flashback, being able to curl up next to a safe person is really helpful. Whereas for middle L, any physical contact or movement towards physical contact is very unhelpful. Have a talk with your loved one about what they would like you to do during a flashback. Be open to this being revised as more information comes to light. 
We had to change our flashback plan when Middle Earl came out of dormancy because of the new triggers that arose. Help ground your loved one by helping them engage with their senses. Let them know where they are and who is around. Let them know that they are safe. Ask them to listen and identify the various noises they can hear. Ask them what the real sensations they can feel are. If they are bringing up the flashback sensations, gently let them know that those sensations are memories and are not happening now. Help redirect their information. From something like, I am stuck in the car, to I am no longer stuck in the car, but I am experiencing the memories of being stuck in a car. Having objects like ice and strong tasting food such as lemons or something spicy can help provide a real sense to help ground your loved one. If you're going to give them food, check to see if the flashback is mouth based because sometimes adding something to the sensations in the mouth is the opposite of helpful. Trying to engage the sense of smell can also be helpful. If your loved one doesn't have scent caused to migraines, maybe use a fragrant candle or hand cream to provide a different smell. If their eyes are open, ask them to identify objects in the room based upon a descriptor. For example, what can you see that is blue? How many chairs are in the room? If your loved one has given permission to be touched, try the hand squeezing technique where you squeeze the hand and ask them to squeeze back. Some people will hurt or touch themselves whilst in the flashback in an attempt to prevent the trauma from happening again. This can be things like trying to scratch away the sensation of their hand upon their arm or hitting an area of their body to try and beat off the sensation. If they are touching a sensitive or private area, do not interfere. You may add to the trauma by interfering. Sensitive areas include the neck, private parts, the upper legs and chest. For some people, there are other sensitive areas that most people consider normal. For example, the back. If they are hurting a non-sensitive or non-private area such as the arms, gently remove their hands from the area or place something in between them. For example, if someone is banging their head against the wall, if it is safe to do so, place your hand between the wall and their head. If they have explicitly said not to touch them in the flashback, then don't touch them. This is a very dicey area, so speak to your loved one before the flashback happens about what they want you to do. For us, removing our hands from the spot we are hurting or touching is not helpful. It drives us further into the flashback because the pain helps ground us away from it, and it is us exercising control in a situation where we had no control. Other helpful things are like asking your loved one to focus on a task. This can be something as simple as counting to a thousand, sorting coloured pens or beads or playing games like the five second rule. Another thing would be to provide a soft item like a pillow or toy. We really find a sequin pillow to be helpful as it provides a different sensation. There are times when your loved one will have no perception of the current world. In these cases, it is scary and confusing to know what to do. If they are not in any way aware of the real world, then don't touch them. Instead, talk to them and just be present. Our support people read the Book of Psalms to us. Not everyone will go well with having scripture read, especially if their trauma is faith-based. Even if your loved one is a Christian, there are passages of scripture that are unhelpful. Our support people know which psalms are best avoided and which ones are helpful for us. Another thing in a similar way is humming or putting on appropriate music. For us, hymns and softer worship music is helpful 
but more upbeat and heavy worship music is unhelpful. We find a lot of comfort in our faith and really appreciate people helping to remind us of God's goodness. But this will not be helpful for everyone. Talk to your loved one about what things provide comfort. These are just a few of the things that can be helpful. The best place to start is to talk and revise what is helpful with your loved one. If you have any other tips for helping someone or yourself through a flashback, please comment them below. Hopefully this video has given you a place to start the conversation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it was helpful, please subscribe. Please know you are loved by the incredible God of the universe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.